Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we'll be having the continuation of our discussion of the mole concept, in particular about the molar mass and percentage composition. But first, let us try to look on the idea of the molecular mass. So when we talk about the molecular mass, this refers to the sum of the atomic masses within a given molecule, so in particular within covalent compounds. So ideally, molecular mass is expressed in AMUs or the atomic mass units, while the molar mass is usually expressed in grams. So let us have sulfur dioxide or SO2 as our example. So in this case, sulfur dioxide is comprised of one atom of sulfur and two atoms of oxygen. So, in getting the molecular mass of a given compound, we just need to multiply the number of atoms of each element to its respective atomic mass, and we just need to add all of those in order to arrive at our molecular mass. So, in this case, let's have this as an example. So, sulfur dioxide has one atom of sulfur, which has an atomic mass of 32.07, so we just need to multiply it. 1 times 32.07 is the number itself, so therefore it's 32.07. Next, we have oxygen. So in this case, it has two atoms. So we need to multiply those two atoms of oxygen to its atomic mass, which is 16. So it's equivalent to 32. Then next, we just need to add all of the respective atomic masses of each element. So 32.07 plus 32 is equivalent to 64.07. Now, in this case, sulfur dioxide, when we are referring to its molecular mass, so one molecule of sulfur dioxide weighs about 64.07 AMUs, while the molar mass of sulfur dioxide or one mole of sulfur dioxide weighs about 64.07 grams. So ideally, molecular mass and molar mass are just the same, but they are just expressed in different units. On the other hand, when we talk about formula mass, this refers to the sum of the atomic masses in a given formula unit unit of usually of ionic compounds. Now, it is almost the same with regards to molecular mass, but in this case, we are just using a different term. So, formula mass is expressed within atomic mass units as well or AMUs, while its smaller mass is also expressed in grams. So, let's have sodium chloride as our example. So, sodium chloride is made up of one atom of sodium and one atom of chlorine. So, ideally, we just need to get the respective atomic masses of these elements. So, sodium has one atom multiplied by its atomic mass which is 22.99 which is also equivalent to the number itself while chlorine same goes which is equivalent in this case to 35.45 so getting the sum of these two is equivalent to 58.44 so if we'll try to get the formula mass of sodium chloride so one formula unit of sodium chloride weighs about 58.44 amus while the molar mass of sodium chloride or one mole of NaCl weighs about 58.54 grams. Now let us try to have some sample problems. So for the first one, let us try to get the molar mass of glucose which is C6H12O6. So in this case, glucose has 6 atoms of carbon. So 6 atoms of carbon multiplied to 12.01 is equivalent to 72.06. On the other hand, hydrogen has 12 atoms. So 12 multiplied to 1.008 is equivalent to 12.096 and oxygen has also 6 atoms which is multiplied to its atomic mass which is 16 which is equivalent to 96. Getting the sum of these atomic masses for these elements is equivalent to 108.156 grams per mole. Take note we use the term grams per mole since we are referring to the molar mass. Another problem. So in this case let's get the molar mass of calcium 2 phosphate. So in this case calcium has 3 atoms. So 3 atoms atoms of calcium multiplied to its atomic mass which is 40.08 is equivalent to 120.24 on the other hand phosphorus and oxygen will have a different number of atoms since it has a subscript of 2 so in this scenario, if the given compound has a subscript, so we just need to distribute that subscript to its respective elements. So in this case, the 2 is covered to phosphorus and oxygen. So if we will try to look on the number of phosphorus atoms in calcium 2 phosphate, it is equivalent to 2. 
So, 2 multiplied to the atomic mass of phosphorus, which is 30.97, is equal to 61.94. And oxygen has 8 atoms since 4 times 2 multiplied to the atomic mass of oxygen, which is 16. So, 8 times 16 is equivalent to 128, getting the sum of these atomic masses. So, it is equivalent to 310.18 grams per mole. On the other hand, percentage composition refers to the ratio of the mass of the atoms present to the total mass of the given compound. So the percentage composition of the elements that comprises a given compound can be computed using this formula. So N multiplied to the molar mass of the element divided by the molar mass of the compound multiplied by 100. So the N refers to the number of atoms that comprises for that element. So let us have this as an example. So C2H6O which has a molecular mass of 46.07 grams per mole. So let us try to look on the percentage composition of each element that comprises this compound. So let us first begin with carbon. So carbon has two atoms so it will go like this. So 2 times 12.01 divided by 46.07 multiplied by 100 which is equivalent to 52.14 percent next we have hydrogen which has six atoms multiplied by its atomic mass which is 1.008 divided by the molecular mass which is 46.07 multiplied by 100 which is equivalent to 13.13 and lastly the percentage composition of oxygen which has one atom multiplied by its atomic mass which is 16 divided by its molecular mass which is 46.07 multiplied to 100% which has a rough estimate of 34.73 now if we will try to look on the respective percentage composition of these elements it will be equivalent to 100% simply because that when we talk about percentage this is equivalent to 100 now let us Let's try to have some example. So what is the percentage composition of the elements that comprises in calcium oxide which has a molecular mass of 56.08? So let us try to compute for it. So let us first begin with calcium. So calcium is made up of one atom multiplied to its atomic mass which is 40.08 divided by the molecular mass which is 56.08 multiplied to 100% which is equivalent to 71.47. On the other hand, the percentage composition of oxygen is equivalent to 1 times 16 which is its atomic mass divided to its molar mass which is 56.08 multiplied to 100% which is equivalent to 28.53% so getting the sum of these two will be also be equivalent to 100% so that concludes our episode for today this is Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home goodbye